What's going on YouTube? When it comes to compact cars, Corolla and Civic are what comes to the average consumer's mind. But for those who care about driving, they would also think of the Mazda 3. For 2019, it was just fully redesigned with more power and luxury than ever before. And it's going to be squaring off against the refreshed Honda Civic, which is known for being a fantastic all-arounder. So has Mazda one up the class leader? Let's find out. Like always, the first thing on the agenda is pricing and equipment. Now since the vast majority of people shopping for affordable vehicles go with lower value-oriented trims, we chose the Civic Sport and the Mazda 3 Select. Both these brands keep things simple by not offering any major option packages. So all you're looking at is a couple of accessories and the destination charges. All told, they're both a little over $23,000 and about $100 apart. So kicking things off with the exteriors. Obviously, each car is going for a different mission. The Refresh Civic is going for a sporty and athletic look with a grill that is always black no matter what exterior color you pick. The Mazda, on the other hand, is working to move upscale. So it has a simple and classy mesh grille surrounded by a thin strip of chrome. That chrome also extends underneath of the premium looking full LED headlights. Civic instead uses halogen lights until you get to the top end touring. But it also includes fog lights which are missing on 3. In a similar way, the rear designs also differ a lot, with the Civic going for a sport back look and the Mazda with a clean, elegant design. Both have some LED lighting elements and exposed exhaust in the middle or on the sides. Finally, as far as your wheels, both cars give you large and good looking 18 inch alloys even on these lower end trims. Now moving past the styling, first we have the mirrors, where only the Mazda includes blind spot monitoring integrated within them. But then as far as all the other safety systems, they match each other tip for tap. Both come fully loaded with forward emergency braking, lane keeping assist, automatic high beam headlights, and adaptive cruise control. For warranties, they also have the same 3 year 36,000 mile basic and 5 year 60,000 mile powertrain warranties. And then to finish things off on the outside, both have 13.2 gallon fuel tanks and nearly identical fuel ranges but the Civic does have a capless fuel filler. Well, that wraps up everything on the outside. So now let's see which one offers the most on the inside. Heading to the interiors, both models come with smart entry. However, only Honda gives you remote start on the fob. At first glance inside, you can immediately tell that these are two of the nicest cabins in the class. The Civics is mostly the same as it's been over the last few years, but in this case, black cloth. The new Mazda 3's cabin is totally redesigned this year, and even on this lower end model, we have grayish leatherette seating. As far as the seats themselves, both are manually adjusting, but neither of them are heated at this price point. Now beyond the seats, both have impressive designs and materials. So on the Civic, all the upper dash is soft touch plastic, and then in the middle you have some black trim. Lower areas are mostly hard touch, but everything does feel very high quality. Mazda though has jumped to the front of the class, with soft touch plastic and lots of leatherette on the upper areas. Plus, even more as you move down to the center tunnel. The same thing is going on for the door trims, where the Mazda basically gives you the same experience as the loaded premium model, even on this entry level model. 
After pressing the push button starts, 7 inch reconfigurable gauges will fire up on both. And then coming back to the steering wheels, you will also find leather wrapping on both, but only rain sensing wipers on the Mazda. Now moving on to the important subject of storage, the Civic is pretty much the undisputed king. Mazda certainly gives you plenty of storage cubbies, but the Civic has a very deep center console, large front bin, and even a center pass-through. These sedans have plenty of storage despite using traditional shifters. Both have manual shifting abilities, but only the Civic has paddles. And when in reverse, both have backup cameras, however only the Honda gives you three views and active trajectory. Now heading up to the climate controls, the Mazda has two advantages. First, it is dual zone automatic versus single zone on the Honda. And second, it is a lot more ergonomically friendly since the Civic requires you to go into the touchscreen to get to certain features like your zones. Now for the audio systems, a technical issue caused us not to have a sample for the Civic, but we'll go ahead and listen to the Mazda anyway. So that takes us up to the infotainment systems, which we'll take a quick look at. First and foremost, the screens on these systems are very different. The 3 has a significantly larger 8.8 inch display compared to 7 in the Civic. But at the same time, Mazda's is no longer touch and can only be controlled through a dash mounted knob. Now as far as the actual software, the Civic is still running the old version of HondaLink, so the graphics and performance are better in the Mazda. Neither of them have integrated navigation at this price point, but they do have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Finally, wrapping up the front, neither have moonroofs. Jumping to the back, the Mazda's full redesign still did not get it ahead of the Civic in terms of rear legroom, though headroom is essentially the same. Once inside the back seats, these are very affordable vehicles, so you won't find a great deal of features. Neither have vents or USB ports, however the Mazda does have a center armrest. The other important rear space is the trunk, and again Civic has a pretty good lead over the Mazda and pretty much everything else in the class. The actual measurements are 13.2 cubic feet versus 15.1 cubic feet, and both do have 60-40 split folding seats. But anyways, these are known to be two of the best driving vehicles in the class, so let's go ahead and compare them there. Just like pretty much everything else, these two are quite different under the hood. While both of them are naturally aspirated, the Mazda has eliminated its base 2 liter engine and now only has a 2.5 liter 4 cylinder. That gives it significantly more power than the 2 liter Civic at 186 horsepower versus 158 horsepower. And that advantage can be felt when accelerating. All right, so getting up to speed in the 2019 Civic. Uh, power feels pretty good. Uh, like I mentioned, this is actually the base engine. So, uh, you, you know, if you get the Sport, then you've got to get the base 2 liter, so it's not a turbo. Um, but power still feels pretty good. I thought that I might really miss the turbo engine, but it doesn't feel uh, too noticeable from what I remember. First taking off in the 2019 Mazda 3, um, you can definitely tell that extra power right off the bat. Most things in this class feel rather breathless, I guess you could say, you know, 
a lot of times you've got low power to low torque engines paired to like a CVT, so launch, um, you know, won't be too powerful. But this one you can definitely feel the extra torque and the immediate responsiveness of the six speed automatic transmission. The Honda routes the power through a CVT and the Mazda via a six speed automatic transmission. Honda did tune the CVT well, but the traditional automatic is still more responsive. I'm not sure I really noticed much of a change, to be no. honest. Um, but as far as the the overall characteristic of the CVT, because I know a lot of you coming from outgoing Civics, you might be concerned that uh, CVT would be something that would bother you or whatnot. Um, but I have to say, it's really a well-tuned CVT. It's not super uh, loud and droney like uh, some CVTs can be. And also one of the things I'm noticing is uh, the level of refinement. You know, Mazda is billing this as, you know, kind of an alternative to a, a cheap luxury vehicle. You know, they're moving upscale. And um, they do back that up with this powertrain. It is very quiet in an uncharacteristic way for the segment. Also the transmission, it is uh, very smooth. Like I said, a lot of the rivals at this point, probably the majority have gone to a CVT. Um, but having this more traditional, more refined transmission, I think really adds to the uh, overall pleasant driving. Like I already said, these are two of the more dynamic offerings in the class, and it only takes a turn of the wheel to feel that. They both have lively steering setups that respond very quickly to input, and there is definitely more feel than in the vast majority of the class. The chassis are also tuned to feel buttoned down and corner flatly. Now one thing that is exactly how I remember is the really excellent steering and the really tossable feel of the vehicle. Uh, this it feels really impressively agile. This steering is super quick, super responsive, uh, and it really feels buttoned down the whole car. Um, it's definitely not what you expect from a compact vehicle. We re it really has just this solid feel that is... Uh, just uncharacteristic of most of the vehicles this competes with. But we haven't lost our traditional Mazda characteristics either in this transition to adding more luxury. Um, this still feels very lively at the wheel. The steering is very good and the suspension at the corner is very flatly. See we're gonna kind of round a corner here and you can just feel that you don't have that lean that most of the rivals exhibit. So it definitely still has that fun to drive vibe. So overall, in a class where driving dynamics are often neglected, these two do a great job. Now one wild card in this whole thing is the Mazda's new ability to get all-wheel drive. Just the fact that it is offered in this class is rare and deserving of a half point. Finally, when it comes to fuel economy, the larger and more powerful engine in the 3 does put it at a disadvantage of 2 MPG combined compared to the Civic. And it's important to remember that higher trims of the Civic have an even more efficient turbo engine. So with that, we've reached the end of yet another really close face-off comparison. Having spent extensive time in both these products, we can definitely say that these are two of the best products in the class. But like always, it's imperative that you test drive both of them in person to figure out which set of characteristics you personally prefer. Anyways, thanks for joining us, and be sure to subscribe for more comparisons and our signature full review videos. Take care. Ooh. Mm -hmm.